delicious. Some generic purple green drink here in my chalice. Yeah. Do you need a drink? I do. I've got purple drink, but I like to do things just a little bit bigger. Oh. So that checks out. Three, two, one, bro. What's up, everybody? We are the brothers. Whoa. We Murph. are. That's true. We are here with another top 10 list. Been a little while. Yeah. I mean, like a month out. Yeah. Now, who's even counting? No one's watching this in real time anyway. It's true. Whoa. Nothing exists. Uh, today, we want to talk about cooperative games. Yeah. Because I think cooperative games, um, they, they hold a, a certain place of significance in the history of our board gaming. Yeah, uh, it's going to be our top 10 cooperative games, and I think, um, yeah, it, 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 it really has. Cooperative games are really kind of what got us started in board games. Mm -hmm. When we first started collecting board games, I suppose, um, we had the ratio from cooperative to competitive games skewed more cooperative. We had more cooperative games. Right. Then it was like 50-50, and now you look at our, our thing, and it's like... It's way skewed the other way. 7%. Yeah, and that's mostly because there's just not nearly as many cooperative games as yeah. there are competitive games, so it makes sense. Indeed. But it's interesting because we were all cooperative all day. Neither of us really liked competitive games that much. We just want to be friends. Yeah, it's true. Now I'm like, I want to crush you. So, it, again, like I said, it Break holds your a, spirit. It's a mechanic that holds a very dear place I in our heart. Make you. I will unmake you. Before we begin our list with the official number 10, we want to talk about an honorable mention that I personally believe is going to climb the ranks. So our honorable mention, our number 11, really could be number 10, is the mine. Get into the mine. You must join mines together. Together we must become one. Must become <laughs> one mine. This is a game we played at a convention. It's a game where you're quietly, and by that I mean silently, trying to put down all of your cards in order. Yep. And we don't know we have cards 1 through 100. Yep. We don't have all of those cards. And we just have to just be like, I feel like mine's next. And you have to put it down. Excuse me. So it's all about feeling each other out, reading body language, and coming together. It's so fun. It's weirdly fun. Yeah. I just can't wait to show it to more and more people. Yeah. I really think this is going to climb the ranks of one of my very favorites because of the unique experience it creates. Yeah, because no one's allowed to talk. So it's a lot of like, mm, yeah, just kind of like trying to figure out if you're next or someone else is next. It's very, very difficult, um, but it's, yeah, it's really fun, and, and I, I understand the game. Not everyone's going to be as enamored with as us, but like... Almost everyone is, though. Yeah, people seem to like it. I don't know what it is. It, it should not be as fun as it is, but it is. It is. And Absolutely so, is. The only reason that's kind of the honorable mention slash sort of 10 is that it, we just became aware of this, like yeah. just now. And it will probably, given another month or so, it probably would have been at least our number 10. So, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Speaking now, of tens, should we do a top ten? Uh, should we? No, it's not. Let's start. Let's do forty-seven to nine. Okay, number ten or forty-seven. We're gonna do number ten. Forty-seven is just gauche. That's weird. All right, Nick, what's our number ten? Our number ten is going to be magic. Maze. I got to do a maze. Abracadorva. It's Magic Maze. A game that's theme makes no sense. But then it totally does. I know. I like the theme. It just It's about it's you're weird. all on the same team, naturally. It's a cooperative list. <laughs> um, you're all on the same team, and you're all like fantasy characters. Like there's an elf, there's a dwarf, there's, a, I think, a mage, and a, a Someone rogue, else. whatever. And you're in a mall for some reason? It makes no sense. And you you have to get out of the mall and you all... You're trying to thieve. Yeah, you're trying to go steal something from the mall and then get out of the mall all together. Now, the reason why the game is great is because, again, kind of like the mind we just talked about, you can't talk during this game. Yeah. And so everyone... No one controls an individual character. I think that's kind of interesting. No one controls a character. You control a direction. The game is yeah. based on a grid. So I control this direction, and Mike controls this direction, and Bob controls this direction, and Susan controls this direction. So the thing is, you're just moving pieces in your direction. So you have to coordinate, like, okay, we need to go here, here, here. So it means Susan needs to go back, and then Bob needs to go this way, and then I need to put it forward, too, so then you mm -hmm. can go over here like this, and it's just... This is another game that uses silence. Yes. Or basically a lot of sounds, because 
you can't talk. You can't nope. say, hey, we need to go down right now. It's up to that person to see, oh, I have to move this person. I'm the only one who can do down. I have to move this person. Someone else has to do it. And the only thing you can use is this little thing to like tap and be like, I need you to pay hey, attention. Hey, we need you to do I something. I can't say any more about like, what to pay attention to. It's just that something's on you. So if someone taps in front of you, you just, you just go like, what, what, am I, what, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? And it's really hard and really stressful because it's also timed. Uh, yes. You have a sand timer that's going down and you can flip that sand timer, but you can only do it a certain amount of times throughout the game. And it's really difficult, but really, really fun. And then once you flip your sand timer, the timer's running, but at that point you can talk again. So you can plan it like, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we need to do this, and then we need to do this. Oh yeah, we go, oh, yeah, you're, 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 good, 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 no, go. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, cool. And then you, and then you I'll go, okay, no more talking, boom, and you go. And, and, and you keep going, and it's just, it's bananas, and yeah. it's really fun. That is Magic Maze. Super fun. Let's do number nine. <laughs> So our number nine is uh, from our sponsor. This is not a uh, cooperative game, but it has a cooperative mode, which to me, for my money, is the only way to play the game. I agree. It's so fun to work together, and that is Stop Thief. Hey, stop it, thief. Hey, you better you better stop it, you magic mazers. See how that worked right into that? Ah, oh. that's how you segue. Bang, bang, professionals. Hell, dog. Um, stop Thief is a really fun game that uses an app now, and it used to use like a old-timey toy with 8-bit sounds. Uh, to give you clues about where the thieves are in whatever building or on the street. So those give you a sound effect of a door opening. Okay, they're at a door space or they're at window breaks or at a window. Uh, and it's really fun if you're just playing normally and you're basically trying to be the one that captures the most people and makes the most yeah. money as a cop. Uh, and this one, you work together to try to catch a gang of thieves. There's seven of it's them, true. and you have to to get it before they steal fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. And so it's super fun because you're trying to like come at it from multiple angles. You're trying to make sure that you surround people so that they can't get too far away once yeah. they once you capture one of them. Uh, and it's just a really fun experience, and it creates a lot of interesting talk and everything. So to, for my money, it's the the best possible way to play Stop Thief. Yeah, I, I really don't have any interest in playing the co-op, the, the competitive version of Stop Thief anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's fun, because in the competitive version, you all want to discuss where you think the person is, but you can't because you don't want to give away where you think the person, the, yeah. the thief is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it in the competitive game is like, you know you're around the thief. You know you're mm -hmm. somewhere nearby, so then it's kind of just like, who can get to the thief first or sometimes because sometimes you just have to guess on where you think they are because they could be like one of two places and you might guess wrong but he might guess right and it's fine but like when you play cooperative then everyone's just discussing everyone's running around trying to catch these thieves yeah. and it's just an absolute blast the way the app works is so well integrated and so cool and every time we play it now i'm just like man i'm liking this more and more and more and more i really really love stop thief as a cooperative game it's just great. And then the, it's from our sponsors, Restoration Games, which makes it even even sweeter. Yeah. Because I like all their games. And even if they didn't sponsor us, it'd still be on our list. Yeah, it's true. So that was Stop Thief number nine, a wonderful kind of like hidden movement game. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Gosh, it's so good. Sick as hell. <laughs> then then for number eight what don't be hating number eight this game is mysterious it, it's i don't even know mysterium oh mysterium is our number eight a truly atmospheric game you yes. can really get deep with the atmosphere if you get the lights yeah, right you get that, some get spooky pandora oh yeah. yeah oh yeah get some like ambiance like, ah. play it in a graveyard yeah, you know. Yeah, um, Mysterium is super cool. It's like uh, it's like Super Clue. You're trying to find out who done it, yep. where they did it, and what they did it with to kill you. Except for the ghost is a character, and the ghost is the person that's giving out the information or hoping to point the practitioners in the right direction yep. uh, using dream cards. So they're super like trippy, like a dream would be. They're not they're not sensical, they're not logical, but you have to kind of like. Mm, Okay, this has a bunch of red. I'm going to give it to Nick because the the killer that's out here has a lot of red on. So hopefully they'll match red to red or something, you know, specific within yeah. the picture. Um, but you really have to kind of do some, it's you know, those... guesswork and then throw it out there and hope that they kind of make the connection, you yeah. know. And so you have the ghost who's absolutely silent when they play. They can knock on the table to say yes or no. But then the rest of the group can kind of discuss, like, I think this is what this means. I think that's what that means. I think my person used the wrench. 
Um, it's just super cool. Like, yeah, it, again, it's it's Clue on steroids. Yeah. It's really what it is. Again, what, the ghost can't talk. A lot of games we can't really talk in this. Um, yeah. But the ghost can't talk, and you're giving out visions because each person has a person, place, or thing attached to that player. Yeah. And then once everyone guesses all of their person, place, things, then the group has to decide which one of those groupings which is set. the is the right one, essentially, because the ghost can't remember who it was or where it was and stuff yeah. like that. And it's interesting, and they're very big, very uh, like Dixit like cards where it's really trippy artwork, or yeah, it's just like a bunch of madness going super on. weird, which is great because then when you give people cards and you're trying to point them in a certain direction, they can just see it's one of those games where you give, give stuff out, and you're just like, oh god, please, please see what I need you to see, please <laughs> see. And then they're like, oh yeah, I think he, I think it's the baker because there's cupcakes in the background, and you're like, yes, yes, I'm killing it. And then one other person goes. Yeah, but there's a lot of green in both of these, like, and this uh, one over here has a lot of green. And you're just like, oh no, 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 please, please, please. But please, you can't, please, you please. can't. You're behind like a D and D type, you know, like a DM's yeah. board, and you can't be all like, yeah, you can't. Side. You gotta be. You got your poker face, man. Yeah, you're sitting here. You're a ghost. You have no idea what's going on. You're just like, yeah, mm-hmm. you're just. That's not your job. And it's it's stressful and it's fun and it's weird. And again, you can crank up the ambiance in this bad boy. Yeah, I would highly recommend doing that. Playing it around Halloween. Yes. Uh, Super fun game. Can hold a lot of people too. I mean, it goes up, up to seven, seven, so it's like it's a it's a and it uh, works well at big crowds. Yeah, you probably want it bigger. You probably least amount of people you want is like four, I would say. Um, so higher amount of people, but better. But like ultimately, oh, Mysterium, super great. If you love Clue, check it out. It's so darn good. That's Mysterium. Whoa. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> So this next one is super important because this was kind of like the turn for us in terms of board gaming. This is like so what this, this is showed it. us that there was a larger world out there, the world of miniature games. These are things we're, 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 our toesies were in. Our toesies we were them. already in. We, we were, we're doing them. this in the water. Just, just, oh, and this is what made us do the whole slide. Ooh, right into that water. Oh, that water, right nice. Water. Now we're just like, ha, 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 ha. This is Zombicide. We um, were, and still enjoy Zombie Side, but we were full all in for a while there. Bad um, news. Because yep. it's a game that is like big, has minis. You can do a Kickstarter and you get all these stretch goals. You just stuff, stuff, stuff. And you're just like, There's a, I can paint this, you know? Um, it's got these modular boards, these missions. You're just like laying waste on zombies. Uh, so we had, you know, the first Zombie Side, the second season, the third season, Black Plague, you know? Yeah, we've it, gone. It's gone. We got a lot of mileage out yeah. of Zombie Side. Yeah, um, it's just really fun because it is just like zombie killing fun, and you're yeah. just this group of survivors trying to get through whatever mission you're trying to, and you get to like create Molotov cocktails and satisfying killing like twenty zombies at once, yep. things like that. Um, yeah, I mean that's all I can really say about it. It's just it's yeah, what I mean, you it's, want it to be in a zombie game. Yeah, exactly. It's just it's get weapons, kill a ton of zombies. Um, and, and it's just great. It's it's big. It's long. Now, especially there there is a companion app. Because one thing about the game, the game takes up a lot of table space. Because you have these a modular board, and they're each these tiles. The tiles are like nine inches by nine inches. They're big. Yeah. And if you have something that takes like eight tiles, like two rows of four, it's a big board. And then you have all the zombies. You have all the minis. And you have all your cards and your individual player dashboards. But the cool thing is, is now all the cards, all your player dashboards, everything now can be taken care of in the app. So, so awesome. really all you need is the board, the stuff on the board, like the doors and such, yeah. and then the zombies, and that's it. And everything else is on your on your app, and it you is... You can even roll oh. your dice in there. Yeah, you can if you don't have dice. And it's like, man, it takes it to a whole other level, to the point where I'm like, hey, the setup and takedown is easier, the game is easier to manage, it takes a smaller footprint. So Zombie Side, we only ever play Black Plague nowadays, but Zombie Side is just, especially with the app now, has gotten really good. Really, really good. I mean, I, I just... Again, this was the game that made us dive in, and it's still up there. It's still one of the best. I Absolutely. really love it. We wouldn't be here without it, man. No. You know what I mean? It's really important. And uh, even if it doesn't get played all the time, it's still a great game. That is Zombicide. Zombies. So, Pick Up Sticks, Normal Thick, is, um, has number two in it. It's very confusing. Our number six is code names but specifically code names duet because the other yeah. code names are like team games you know yeah. yeah this is a true one-on-one co-op game and code names i like just fine it's yeah. not my favorite game by just imagination but it's good it's like a great it. little game 
And when I heard they were coming out with a cooperative two-player only version of Codenames, Codenames Duet, I did not think it was going to work. I did not know how it was oh, going to really? happen. I, I didn't have much faith in it. But it's code names, which is kind of like password the game. You have a grid of mm -hmm. words, and then you're giving clues, trying to point out words to your to your teammate, trying to get them to guess certain words. So there's a whole bunch of words, and you're like, oh, animal, two. That means two words on the grid pertain to the clue animal. Like bear and squid. Yeah. Yay. I win. And Codenames Duet is that, except for you're both on the same team, looking at the same grid. You have different words on the same grid. Some of your words overlap. And yeah. it's it's just, it works way better. Particularly if you know the person. Like, we know each other very, very well. You go deep level, man. You can get real meta in it. You can, we can bring back stuff from childhood, you know, that you both, it's it's just crazy. And I, I, I every time we play it, I like it more. I really, Agreed. really do. Agreed. It's just, it's super fun. Um, it's hard, you it's know, hard. you can create a kind of a campaign mode where you can make it harder or easier on yourself, depending on like, how challenging do I want to be? We have to do things that are all, we have to connect like three words at a time in order to make it through this. That's really tough. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, it's super fun. Codenames Duet is a great option. Yeah. I really enjoy it. It's my favorite version I've ever played of Codenames. Yes, by far. By far. Um, and it's great because it's two players, so that's useful. You know, it's hard to find sometimes two player specific games. And this is a two player specific co-op game. Yeah. Totally. It's fantastic. That's Codenames do it. Accurate. <laughs> Let's do number five now. Top five, baby. Oh, oh now we into the good games. Yeah, yeah. All the rest are crap. My number five, by that I mean ours, is e e e Flatline. Nope, didn't work. Oh, it worked on me. Uh, Flatline. Flatline is a sequel to Fuse. It is a game in which you're trying to heal patients, um, and you're basically trying to do this by putting certain combinations of types of dice and the dice faces. So there's different colored dice. And you have to have the right faces of those dice sometimes, so it can get very specific. Um, well, that's not right, because we just have different colored dice. Okay, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, you're right. So it's a game where you're trying to heal patients through getting types of dice in the right combinations to, like, cure the patients. There's several lines you have to fill out to cure one patient. Um, and it's it's all kind of real-time based. So you have to kind of talk about, like, okay, if we can, let's try to cure patient one and three. Yeah. I think between us we can probably get this done. Okay, we all have a sort of a plan. We hit a timer that starts a one-minute rolling period. Yeah. You roll your dice once, and then you try to then place your dice in some sort of advantageous way to try to get as much done and around as possible. Yeah. There's things that allow you to do certain re-rolls, but you're kind of under the gun at that point. Yeah. Uh, and so it does these, like, little minute bursts of controlled chaos yeah and then kind of these cooldowns and strategic sessions so it takes a lot of stuff from fuse and really turns it into a great game yeah because it takes fuse which is just 10 minutes straight and you have it's to like, fuse all these bombs and saying that you're rolling die trying to get the faces you need but it is just fuse is bananas it's 10 yeah. minutes of absolute stress and screaming and it's great and i love it we all need that but sometimes. flatline is more of a game it's a more of a whole game and those crazy minutes of stress are only a minute and they're every once in a while. So you discuss, and you do like refreshing stuff, and you're sitting here talking and stuff, and then you go, okay, here's our plan. Boom. And then you have a minute where you're rolling and talking, and then move around with the minute. And then the minute ends, and then you go, oh, okay, well, how do we do? And then you go, okay, we did this, we, did, we need to do this. And then you go back to discussing it, and it, having that break is so huge. Nice. Yeah. And, then, and then there's more, and then it, there's strategy in terms of rolling, when to re-roll, what, what order to do things in, because there's like, stats going on where it's like these are emergencies if you don't yeah. do these now you gotta deal with some of those you gotta deal with them now we gotta go stats there's emergencies yeah you know. and it's just it's all over the place and it's just it takes fuse which is a great game and makes it so so much better yeah to the point where like again it's number five but for me it might it might go up even more from here and the more we play it. we actually don't have it but it's one of the games we'll probably it's probably one of the next ones on our list yeah um it is it's it's good, man. It's good. Another oh. fine Renegade and, Games product. And Renegade Games and the the qual the die and it's the oh, it's, oh it's, uh, I just want to eat it. Um, 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 it's a beautiful um, game, man. It's a beautiful game. That yeah. is Flatline. Beep. So next is a Ooh. big one. Ooh. This is a big ass open ended exploration <sighs> game, and you're just cursed to high heaven. Yeah, it's just nothing like it. Nothing like it. This is Seventh 
Continent. Seventh Continent. Uh, this game is great. It's so fun because it's just all these cards that basically build out a giant map and you go on to these different map pieces and you're trying to solve whatever curse is afflicting you at the time. That's how the different, they're kind of like modules or different yeah. curses. And um, it's just wild in terms of how much exploration you can do. And no one's telling you you have to go this way or that way. You can go wherever the hell you want. Because the curses, you have this curse, but like particularly the first curse you do, you have no information. Like yeah. you have no idea you, what you're you supposed you to are. do. Like you're just like, you have this curse. You maybe have a couple clues, like a, a teeny bit of tidbits. And then you literally are just being like, well, let's just explore stuff. So something sort of seems familiar. Yeah, and which sounds like a bad idea. Like, that sounds like a crappy design, right? And But it works. It's so and, close to, like, falling apart. No, and they it, managed to get it done. But, like, any wrong step, and it would be a completely unplayable It game. skirts the line from amazing and disaster so yeah. closely. But it, it yeah. always falls on the amazing side. Yeah, I agree. And it's, and it's super simple. No matter what you're doing, whether you're fighting or you're building or you're climbing or you're fishing or whatever it is the billion things you can do this many game, things <laughs> it all works in the exact same way that's very very simple it has this really cool action card deck that's also your life and stuff yeah. and you're just exploring and even we did the first curse which which really like delves you in like you have to put you through it put you through it and when we decided to restart up again to our second curse because we needed a breather because it was like 30 hours or something for the first curse and we got back, I was wondering, I was like, I don't know if I'm still going to like this, because we've explored a lot of the continent. Is it going to be fun exploring the same stuff? And it is, because you're looking for different stuff. Yeah. There might be something on this in this hut that we looked at last time, and we didn't know what the hell was in there, because yeah. it didn't have to do with our curse. And now we're like, oh, oh, did you do what you had to do? That's, oh, oh. that's that gem. Oh. And it's just, it just makes it so much fun. Yeah. And uh, it's a choose your own adventure book. Yeah. And so awesome. often, you choose wrong. Especially with the two people who are like, there's a magic relic. Do you touch it? I touch it. We always touch it. And it always goes bad. It's perfect for our kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. Semi-chaotic. Indeed. Fun, adventurous folks. Indeed. That is Seventh Continent. Yes. Cool. <laughs>
Number two is a true deck builder. Um, yes. And that is Marvel Legendary. Legendary, a Marvel deck building game, I guess, is its official actual title. That it is. But nonetheless, Marvel Legendary. Um, this is a game that's a deck builder where you're playing as Marvel heroes. Pretty straightforward deck builder. You know, certain mm -hmm. cards trigger other cards, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Want to combo stuff. Yeah, but you pick five heroes, and you're all playing as all those heroes. So it's not like, I'm Wolverine, he's Iceman. You right. can grab cards from different heroes and such. You're playing against a mastermind, like a big villain. He's got like a villain. He or she's got a villain group with him or her. And you're, you're going through, and then you have a scheme twist, which changes the game. The scheme twist is usually how you can lose the game. Yeah. And, and so it changes the scenario each time. You kind of have to play a little bit differently. But there, again, talk about content. There is a ton... We, we don't even have it all. We don't even have actually even, yeah, we don't even have anywhere near it all. And I think we have 115 heroes or something like that. We have a lot. And you only play with five. Like, it's the, the amount of replayability of this game is astronomical because you can always play, even if you played the same five heroes, I think we have like 40 masterminds, yeah. something like 30 different villain groups. Like, you can play the same Scheme five twist, heroes. And you'll never play the same game twice. Never. You know, and it's just like, it's Ugh. so good though. Yeah, it's super fun. It's really fun to play with folks who maybe don't play board games as much because it, it's really cool to be like, what heroes do you love? What your, five would be your super team? They're Let's in start the game. There. Yeah. Let's create that and then go from there. So everyone is just like, oh, I've always loved Wolverine, man. I love, I love, uh, I want to play, you know, Silk. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever obscure character because we're into the obscure stuff at this yeah. point yeah. and um it's just really fun you know it's just smashing up bad dudes yeah it's it's a it's a good game it's yeah. it's an absolute blast it's a game we've played it's probably our most played game ever yeah. um we played when we first got this game the first year we had it we played it probably a hundred times at least in a yeah. year which is pretty astonishing i mean it we played the ass out of this game and it's great we've slowed on it not necessarily enjoying it less we just don't play as much as we used to but man we have played this we've, game we've gotten some hours on it yeah we've gotten we some have. value out of it totally <laughs> totally it's a great game though if you like deck builders if you like marvel get it get you can even get the base game of the first expansion dark city and you really don't ever need any more yeah but if you do want more it's out there they've got you covered indeed I think it's time, Nick. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> Shocker. The most unclimactic number one. Not even. People don't know us. We totally lied. There's not going to be a bunch of tension. Number one is, of course, Pandemic. It's just the best game. It's so great. It's my favorite. I believe it was your third yes, sir. favorite game. Uh, we played it today. It's just... It's a game that keeps on giving. It's It was... The first game that, like, opened up our eyes to, oh, there's more to board gaming than we thought. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, without Yeah, I had no idea that this here. kind of game existed. I didn't yeah. know that cooperative games were a thing. I didn't, it's just like, it's easy, it's it's easy to learn. It's a hard game to beat. Mm -hmm. Everyone's Solid working together. puzzle, you know. Yeah, everyone talks, everyone communicates. It's great. It's a great little puzzle. Mm -hmm. There's a great expansions for it. On the Brink is a pretty essential expansion, in my opinion. But then there's, like, different versions, too, yep. at this point, you know. Yeah, there's uh, Liberia, Rising great. Tides. Yeah, which I haven't played yet. Cthulhu, I like, but it's mm -hmm. not my... I like... Iberia is great. But then there's, like, Pandemic Legacy Season 1, which we're in the middle of, and it's great. There's Pandemic... Se Legacy Season 2. Yeah. You know, they're kind of doing this pandemic around the world thing. You know, they just came out with the Dutch Rising Tide one. They'll probably have another one, you know, and it's why like... Not? You know? Why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's just... Again, it's the game that got us into it. There is that nostalgia for, for us. But it is actually that good of a game as well. It's it not is. riding on its nostalgia. It's, yeah. it's it's solid. Like I like it introduced the idea of like player powers and yeah, and you true. can do something I can't do. That's really neat. And how are we going to tailor our strategy based around the characters that we are? You know, there's just so much to it that the game never gets old. We played that game so many times over the years and I'm still love lot, it just yeah. as much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's great. All the different roles, everything is is wonderful about it. It's and again, it is my go to gateway game. Uh, I love to teach. I talked to someone last weekend, and it was it went great. Yeah. And I just I'm like, oh, I just I love it so much. I love. It. I, I have a hunch in the next few years it's going to get toppled off the number one spot. Just got a hunch. It's just going to happen. But I mean, it's Whoa. it's good, man. It's good. I yeah. love pandemic. It's it's so wonderful. It's excellent. So, of course, it has to be our number one. It I'm, is. I can't imagine a cooperative game that will 
overtake that. But I guess we'll see in time. Indeed. Uh, super fun. So that concludes our top ten list. I barely have any juice left. I, I have so I only got like a good, cool half gallon up in here. Um, thanks so much for hanging out. Let us know what cooperative games you like to play. What are the ones we need to try out? I'm sure we're missing some just bangers. Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's, we don't have nearly as many as we used to. Well, yes, we have just as many, but the ratio the is ratio different. Cause the ratio is because we games around all indeed, the, the, the co-ops we used to have. But, um, I love them. I, I, a cooperative game, if I, it's one of those mechanics, if I feel, find out something's cooperative, it's instantly kind of like, really? Well, let's That's see about this thing. Huh. Hmm. Okay. And so, yeah, cool. so let us know what we should play. Let us know where we're wrong. Let us know where we're right. What's your favorite cooperative game out there? There's no right or wrong answer, man. I mean, just opinions, you know. Ours are not correct. Ours are solid. I'm quite a fan of them. <laughs> They're the perfect for us. <laughs> that's true. And that's good enough, too. Um, do be sure to tell us also, if you want us to stream any of these cooperative games, yes, please let do. us know and we'll give them a go at twitch.tv slash thebrothersmer. Indeed. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Please give it a subscribe if you like our content. And please, please, please share this video with your friends, your family, your grandmother. They all want to see it. You're like, look how stupid their list is. That's totally fine, man. That's, That's all fair. I'll take that baby. share. That's right. Indeed. Um, yeah, thank you so much as always for the continued support, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next top ten what should it be? Give us suggestions down below. You let us know. All right. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye. I mean, nothing sad happened, though. Nah, it's true. Oh, well. I'm going to drink the rest of this in one go. <laughs> Click them! Click all these things! They're here! Click, 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 click the videos. Click the videos. Response for restoration games. Click that. We'll link down below to see them. Click all our social media. Click, 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 click. Ah, ah, too many videos. Too much stuff. Ah, ah, ah. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Too much stuff. I'm drowning. I'm drowning all this stuff. Ah, 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 ah.